So if you have a wave that is e to the j k x, okay, so u x t x zero is equal to that. Then instead of uh, plugging in, so let's let's first uh, plug it in into the uh, the analytical derivative du dx is equal to jk times u, right? But if you plug it into, for example, a central difference scheme, okay, that is equal to something different. So ui plus 1 would be equal to e to the jkx plus jk delta x. And u of i minus 1 would be equal to jkx minus jk delta x, right? Because i plus 1 and i minus 1 are spaced from x by delta x and minus delta x. Divide by delta x. And then this term and this, sorry, this is e. And this term can be pulled out because you can convert the exponential of summation and, and uh, uh, into the product of exponentials. So it is equal to e to the jkx times e to the jk delta x minus e to the jk minus delta x, right? Okay, so this is actually just the u at x. It's equal to u times, and this is, uh, you can work out uh, the real part of this actually gets cancelled out. The, the imaginary part of this is actually j times sine of k delta x divided by delta x, right? Okay, so now if you look at the derivative of this compared to the derivative, uh, to the analytical derivative, it is as if, just to compare jk with j of this, it is as if you have uh, the the oscillation speed of uh, the oscillation speed of wave number k has been translated in into an oscillation of sine of k delta x divided by delta x. All right. This is so called uh, the modified wave number. So k is the wave number, right? k is the frequency, it's called in space, which is also called the uh, wave number. And uh, this is the modified wave number, it's how the numerical scheme is modifying the wave number. And this also relates to dispersion and dissipation. Okay, so, uh, so for example, for our central difference scheme, let's actually plot how our k relates to the modified wave number. And it's actually customary to plot uh, k delta x uh, with a sine of k delta x, uh, because this is like the, the wave number, uh, this is the wave number non-dimensionalized by the grid spacing, right? And uh, this is now the modified wave number non-dimensionalized by the same grid spacing. So let's actually plot this to see what we get. So uh, let's just uh, say kdx is uh, link space of, I mean, it only makes sense to plot this from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, and then let's plot kdx against the sine of kdx. Well, we get a sine curve for sure. So that means that, um, so, so the perfect, uh, if, if I have a perfect numerical scheme, I shouldn't be modifying the wave number, right? My, my modified wave number should actually equal to the, modif uh, to the original wave number. So uh, let's do axis equal uh, and uh, grid. Okay, so a perfect uh, uh, numerical scheme would have a modified wave number that goes exactly on the 45 degree diagonal. But the second order up in this scheme, uh, so not the up in this scheme, the central difference scheme actually modifies the wave number to go down. This is consistent, right, to our uh, dispersion analysis, saying that the higher frequency oscillations actually travels at a slower rate. 
and the extremely high frequency oscillations over here actually travels at a negative speed. All right, that causes the dispersion we have seen. Okay, and the, uh, this plot is very informative. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, the literature, people usually only show the first half of this, so basically from zero to pi, and shows that how it modifies the uh, the wave number. And uh, basically, what you can see is that uh, let's actually hold on and the plot k dx against the k dx. Okay, so so this is the the whole picture. So for low enough uh, wave numbers, the scheme actually resolves the wave pretty well. And for high wave numbers, the scheme has a, a huge error in how the wave is going to be treated. Okay, and a high resolution scheme on that sense is basically a, a scheme that resolves something that is has high wave number normalized by the grid spacing. So, so for example, it's actually pretty common to see specifically designed high resolution schemes to resolve all the way to somewhere here and then it very fast drops down right so so this would be considered a high resolution scheme okay we can also take a look at for example how our scheme uh, we just a design we just a uh, uh, designed the the second order opinion scheme is doing right and that analysis, uh, let's just uh, do it in, in MATLAB because uh, uh, there is there is also equivalent way of doing doing this analysis in, in MATLAB. Okay, so so this is just uh, by saying that uh, we have a let's change a different color. So let's analyze the scheme of a u i plus b u i minus one plus c u i minus two divided by delta x. Let's analyze this in MATLAB. So if we plug in uh, the, the, the wave, we have ui is just equal to, well, let's just let's say ui is equal to ui, ui minus 1 is equal to ui times e to the minus j k delta x, right? And ui minus 2 would be e equal to ui times e to the minus j k times 2 delta x, okay? And... Uh, uh, then this would be equal to basically ui times uh, e to the min uh, sorry a plus b times e to the minus jk delta x plus c times e to the minus 2 jk delta x divided by delta x so the modified wave number uh, analysis would be saying that I have uh, modified the wave number, the grid wave number of k delta x into a grid wave number of a plus b times e to the minus j k delta x plus c times e to the minus 2 j k delta x. Right? Okay, and uh, we already have a, b, and c in our... Uh, so let's see... Uh, my my weights is equal to that, okay? So that's our second order upending scheme. And we already have our k delta x. The modified uh, k delta x would be equal to, say, w1 plus w2, which is b, times uh, e to the E to the minus 1j times k delta x plus w3 times exponential of minus 2j times k delta x. I think it's k delta x. Okay. Uh, yeah, modified dx. So now we can see that. Uh, uh, so let's actually plot two curves. We first uh, plot k dx uh, the, with the imaginary component of modified k dx okay so this is it so let's hold hold on 
and uh, plot k dx and k k dx. Just to compare it with the ideal miracle scheme. And so what do we see here? We see that, okay, um, compared to the previous scheme, right, which only modifies the scheme to lower, uh, which only modifies the wave number to make it uh, smaller, have the wave traveling slower. This actually makes the intermediate waves travel a bit faster, right? And uh, uh, compared to compared to this, and another thing we see is that uh, I don't know if you can see over here, but uh, the the wave numbers are no longer purely imaginary. Okay, there are some real components. So let's plot it. Also, plot k dx and the, the real part of modified k k dx. Did I call it ddx? Uh, maybe I just call it wrong. Okay, so this is the uh, this curve. The orange curve is the real component of the modified wave number. So what does that mean? Yeah, that's right. This is the amount of dissipation the numerical scheme is adding. So an ideal scheme would have the blue curve track the red curve all the way to 2 pi, right? Which, I mean, in real case is impossible. And also I have the, the orange line to be flat at zero all the, all the way, right? Which is uh, which is actually possible. Uh, that's actually the case for our our central scheme. All right. So this is a uh, this is the so-called modified wave number analysis, and uh, uh, it's it's normal to want to design a scheme to have high resolution, which means the scheme should actually. Uh, be closer to the actual wave number. I mean, the modified wave number should be closer to the actual wave number, which only has imaginary parts, uh, and basically, right? Uh, and uh, uh, right. So, okay. 